Hello. Doha, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Irini. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Nebula Cohort 2. Our session today is session 10, Introduction to GitHub. And as usual, please, uh, you can find the notepad link in the chat and write your name in the roll call and answer the break ice icebreaker question for today. Uh, do you lost any of your uh, files you have backed up before or not? Also, as usual, uh, our uh, call is uh, recorded and transcripted. So if you want to turn on your camera, uh, we love that. And if you uh, mind that, please uh, off your camera. Also, uh, the video will be available on our YouTube channel as usual, and the caption will be also available. And don't forget our code of conduct for the community participation guidelines. You can find that in the notepad. And you, uh, if you face any uh, problem or any issue, you can email us on the emails um, which posted in the notepad too for our upcoming breakout rooms. Please don't forget to write a W if you want to write for today or S if you want to speak with us. And for our uh, presenter for today, we have a lovely person, S Dubs. And it's to you Dubs to introduce to us the GitHub today. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Doa. Hi, everyone. Um, It's been nice hearing the stories of how you lost your files. Not that I'm happy you lost your files or anything. But luckily today, we're going to learn a quick way or an easy way to make sure that we always have our files and not just our files, but the entire history of the file. So every change you ever made. If that sounds awesome to you, then you're definitely going to love GitHub. I will start sharing my screen. I promise I know how to share my screen. Can everyone see my screen and confirm that you can see it bold enough by giving me a thumbs up or a wave, a green sticky, whatever you choose. All right. So once again, welcome to the Nebula call for this week. We're going to be giving an introduction to GitHub and if at any point you feel like I might be going too fast, just put it in the chat and Doa and Irene will be nice enough to let me know so I can slow down. And if you also feel lost or you have a question or something wasn't clear, please feel free to also put that in the chat and I will come back to it. Right. For the sake of completeness, these are the list of references and all the people who have helped us create the material we'll be using for today's session. So thank you, Mozilla, Kirsty Witheka, Mavika Sharan, and every other person credited here. So if you've ever walked in a group with other humans, you might have had certain challenges while trying to use one document to collaborate on the same thing. So recently I started to work with two other lovely colleagues of mine to create swag items for OLS. These are gift items that we want to give away at conferences or at certain venues, or if you participate well enough in this session, maybe one of them could be yours. But we started using a collaborative document to put our ideas all together in one place. And as you might imagine, with someone who's starting out for the first time, it might be tricky to use the same document with a lot of other people. 
So I'm going to quickly ask you to put in the chat some challenges that might arise from using the same documents with other people. And I'm going to pause for a few seconds so that you can put that in. Yes, multiple changes at the same time. That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. It's very hard to control and to take decisions because everybody wants to put something in there. That's right. Sounds like... Oliviera is very keen on receiving one of our swag. All right. So, right. Here it says that there's asynchronous and conflicting edits. So, edits that are happening not at the same time. So, they are happening at different moments. And someone might edit something that conflicts with what you've just edited. Maybe you put in a paragraph and someone edits that same paragraph to take out the, the thing that you have just put in all your soul and might and all the energy that went into adding that one contribution is gone because someone else changed it, right? And there are so many different time zones. If Irene and I were to work on the same collaborative document, it means that Irene has to be up in the middle of the night so that it can be noon for me and we can work together. That doesn't seem very feasible and easy to do. And there are all so many versions of the same document and it's hard to keep track of changes. Right here, we see a picture of a fox. I like this fox. And this fox has a repository, which we will soon know what that means. But for now, know that a repository is a folder, also called a repo. This fox has made a change in some of the files right here. Additions, edits, highlights, subtractions, and these are all the changes that we talked about earlier. There has to be a way of tracking everything that happens on our files. So every time you make a change, it's called a revision. And every time you make a revision, you get a new version. So we're picking up on a lot of them. Store them in your heart. I might be asking you in another five minutes or so. So here, there's an animation of some co-workers who are looking for a file, just like our icebreaker for today. Irene had asked us if we've ever had an experience with losing files, that these people here are looking for a file, that they need a version system, as you see in the image version, four, version three, version two, version one, so many different versions to just find the copy, to find that thing they're looking for. But there's an easier way to do it. We don't need so many copies of the same file. This is all around the same points of adding, removing, highlighting, and making different revisions that birth what when you make revisions what do you get in the chat please you get a new something i'll give you a hint it starts with the letter v I see Doa being very tempted to want to put the answer in the chat. But right, when you make a revision, you get, right, you get a version. That's right. 
painting well done. You get a new version every time you make a revision. So that puts the idea of version control. It's a way of managing your changes or your revisions. This is how you track every single revision you make to a file so that you don't need multiple versions. You can have one file and you're able to revisit all the history. There are tools that currently do that. For instance, we have Google Drive. And I know Google Drive saved Olivera's life, so it might be a fun. Google Drive, Dropbox. And now we have other advanced tools like Git, which is a local version control system. You might have heard me say GitHub, and now we're saying Git. Well, I'm going to quickly differentiate between Git and GitHub, and that will be clearer in a few minutes when I explain GitHub some more. But Git is a software, software that does the actual tracking of the changes in your file. While GitHub is a space on the internet, so it's a web page, like a cloud version where you can visually interact with all the files that you have, right? So you see what that means pretty soon. So a revision is a change that you make and each change is associated with a timestamp. For instance, it has details of who made the changes, why they made those changes, what changes they made, and this is version control. So this is an illustration again, just to buttress the point of a very nice looking dinosaur collaborating on a project with other animals, right? And so everyone can contribute their own part to the same file without us having conflicts. Now, GitHub, what is GitHub? This is the landing page for GitHub. And I'll always be the first to say that I like the theme for GitHub. I like how fancy their UI is. And I'm not sponsored by GitHub to say that. So GitHub is a place on the web where you can host your repositories. You can host your projects. So we're going to see soon what a repository really is, but note that it is a folder or a project that you host online on this place called GitHub. And it helps you to also collaborate or work with contributors because you're not an island. You can't do it all by yourself. You need people, right? And GitHub also provides a web interface for version control. There are alternative ways to use Git, the software, which does not involve GitHub all the time. And that is much trickier than GitHub. Thankfully, we're doing GitHub today and not the other methods of using Git. You can also use GitHub for project management. So GitHub has a tool called GitHub Projects where you can put different tasks that you've been assigned to or that you've assigned yourself and track them. Oh, this is in progress. This is done. This has to move um, to someone else. So this is good for project management for small or large projects. You can even use it to track your busy life. I am speaking from experience, yes. So GitHub is also used for communication. And it's useful for when projects involve a large number of people working together. And now we take a brief intermission to ask, do we even have a GitHub account? I'm waiting for answers in the chat, please. Oh no, someone doesn't have a GitHub account, but that's fine. That's why we're here. So I'm going to pause for a few minutes to give everyone some time to create. 
their GitHub account. All you have to do is go to github.com and sign up. It's really that straightforward. And Oliveira says that he has an account but doesn't use it frequently. Hopefully today, the entire OLS team will be able to convince you to use it more frequently. Right, GitHub exercise. We're going to create our own repository. I'm going to pause this screen share and then share another screen where I will show you how to create a GitHub repository. But I'm going to quickly go through the steps first before I do that. So a repo, a repository, a folder, a project is just one and the same thing synonymous, right? So it's a project where all your files are either online on GitHub or on your computer. So we're going to our first repository. Irene, do you have a question? I did. We had a few people who did do not have a GitHub account. Um, can we check if uh, they had the time to create it already? Okay. That's a good point. Thanks, Irene. So I'm going to ask that you give me a green check mark if you're done creating your GitHub account or if you already had a GitHub account so we know when to move on. I see one green check mark. Hello? Yes, Edmund? Yeah, uh, so uh, as I wrote uh, in the chat, uh, yesterday I created my account and uh, I have my username, but uh, I, I, I did uh, I did not uh, do anything. Okay. I prefer this uh, call to not exactly how about uh, how to use uh, this uh, thank you thanks edmund um if i understood you correctly you said that you created your github account yesterday and you have a username but you're not sure how to use that account yet exactly uh, you're in the right place. We're going to show you all the cool things that you can do with your GitHub account. So you're just going to go to github.com and sign in with the login details you used to create that account yesterday. And so for everyone else to get green check mark for us to go, just click on React. There's a little hat on the lower part of your screen that says React. And the green check mark is on the left. So you can just give me a green check mark to say, yes, I have my account and I'm ready to go on. Wait a few seconds. So sorry, because uh, I use my phone uh, to join us. And uh, it is very really difficult for me to to access the link shared by um Aaron, but is there any uh, way to to do that? Um, thanks for letting us know. You can actually use GitHub on your phone. That might be a bit trickier because now the interface is going to be smaller and. What I show on my screen might look a little different, but I think if you follow along closely, you'll be able to do the things that we're doing. And if you're stuck at any point, you can let us know and we'll take you to a separate breakout room. How does that sound? Okay, all right. All right, thanks, Edmund. I have four check marks if I count me. But if I don't count me, I have three checkbox. 
So I'm going to wait a while longer for Sohana, Alan, Benton, Mohammed, who else? Deborati. I'm going to wait a while longer. In the meantime, for those with green check marks, pop quiz, every time you make a change to your file, it is called a blank hint that with an R. Oh, we have one more person who has created an account and logged in successfully. That's good. That's good. Just let us know if you're stuck and we can help you. Yeah, so I think we can move forward. And if anyone needs help, please send me a message or put it in the chat and we can move to a breakout room uh, so that we can help you create the account. Yeah, that sounds great, Irene. Thanks. So I'm going to go over the steps I mentioned earlier and then demonstrate how we can create this repository. I'm just checking that everyone can still see the slides. Okay. So we're going to make a repo called Friendly Collab Party. And you're free to call your repo whatever you want to call your repo. No. My slides are out of control, forgive me, please. I'm going to stop sharing the slides and start sharing the screen that has my GitHub account. All right, um, green check marks if you can see my screen and mean the part of my screen that I want you to see. Okay. So this is my GitHub account in the URL here. You see that I have gone to github.com forward slash my username. So anytime you go to github.com and just add your username to the link here, it takes you right to your GitHub account. And this is me. So we're going to create a repository. I'll show you two ways of doing this and you decide which is easier and more comfortable for you. So one way would be to go to the plus sign here. See when you hover over it, it says create new. So when you click on that, it says create new repository import. We're not going to import, we're going to create. So click on create new repository. So this is us. Right here should have your username. And you can type in the name of your repository for today. We're going to call it friendly collab party. Well, because I already have a repository called Friendly Collab Party. It's not going to let me create another Friendly Collab Party. So I'm just going to trick it and add another Y. Yeah, that fixed it. So in the description, you can add just a one-liner or more saying what the repo is about. And I'm just going to say a demo repo for Nebula 
people. And you can either set your repository to public or private. Public if you're okay with anyone on the internet seeing it and private if you don't want people to see what's in this repository. So I'm going to say public because we like to share our work openly. And this step lets you add a readme file. I'll tell you what a readme does. So if you click on add a readme file, it automatically creates a new file that lets you write a longer description for your project. So in here, I've just said a demo repo for Nebula. In my readme file, I can make it as long and as extensive as I want. So if you were creating your personal software, you could say what the software is, how people could contribute to your software, et cetera. And this is a slightly more advanced idea, a git ignore. This file just lets you state all the things in your project that you don't want to be found on GitHub. So you want Git to ignore those files, hence the name git ignore. And this is for license. You can choose any license of your choice, or if you're not sure what license to go for, you can leave it blank. Remember, title of your repo, short description of your repo, set it to public, add a readme if you want, and create. Ta-da! New repository has been created. I'm going to pause right here and ask if people have been able to follow along up to this point. I see a lot of green check marks. I like green check marks. I'm happy. Let's see. Okay. Um, Olua Fumilaya, you were asking, how did you arrive at create a new GitHub repository page? How long ago was it? Yeah. Um, what... Okay. Okay. Well done for figuring. I've got now. You are right. It's just that I don't know the license to choose. Oh, that's okay. It's licensing is something that we teach, but it's okay if you don't know what license you want to use for your project. It's completely fine to leave it blank until you're sure what sort of license you want to use. Um, I'm going to link you to our video library yeah. that has all the nice talk about licensing if that's something that's interesting to you right um i see green marks saying we can move on but i remember promising to show you two ways to create this repo so i'm going to go back to the home page and show you another way remember the first way was to click on create and then create a new repo, or you could click on repositories and there's a shiny green button here that says new. That's another way. So you decide what is easier for you. So we're back here. This is our repository with our readme file. The next step would be to show you some components of this repo that you need to know. Quick check that people can still hear me. Can hear you. Awesome. Thanks, Dora. Just a moment while I find 
my slides. I have lost my slides. No. Okay, I found it. So the next part is to show you the different components of a README and a repo landing page so that it makes more sense to you. Screen share. Confirming that people can still see my GitHub repo. Is that still visible? It's still uh, loading. <laughs> okay. High buttons attract the link to the video library for licensing. So. Everyone can access it. You are a star door. Thank you. You're welcome. I see Renee came back. Were you able to help? Does anyone need specific help anywhere? We have a question in the chat. Okay. Yeah. No, no, it is how are we to create another repository using the second method? No, unless you want to, but that was just to show you that there are two ways of creating your repo on GitHub. You don't have to create the second one unless you really want to, and that's fine. I initiated a screen share. I'm not sure whether it did share. Yes, it does appear now. Awesome. And it's my repo, right? Okay. So there are some components that you should know in the repo or repository or projects. For one, right here, your username should be visible and next to it should always be the name of the repo that you're currently in, right? And then if we go here, we also see the name of the repo that has been created. Likewise. I have so many tabs open, it's a huge mess. So the main button here, main, this brings us to an idea that we're not going to dive too deep into for now, but it's the idea of branching. You can make branches in this file to do specific things. For now, this is just the main branch, but if you were to create another branch, this is where you would go for that. And right here is how you would add a new file. If you were going to add a new file, you could click here to create a new file or here to upload the file, either by searching on your computer or drag and drop. And this is code. If you were going to copy the link to this project to give it to someone or to um, download the files in this, um, repo to your local computer. And these are the files. For now, we have just one file called the README. So we're quickly going to edit this file. We're going to edit this file. And you can edit the file by clicking on this pencil, meaning I want to write. Let's do this. So I'm going to put the slides right next to it so I can alternate. If there's something on slide 18 that still doesn't make sense, do let me know, please. 
but congrats, you have created your first ripple. So now we're going to talk about Markdown formatting. So Markdown is a very simple language. It's, it's very straightforward and it helps you to write in very stylish ways on GitHub. It's stylish, but it's easy. So Markdown has that benefit. So if you could please click on that tiny button, I'm going to go back so you see how it's done. Click on this button to edit your readme file. For now, you see the title of the file and that short description you wrote. Remember, a readme is where you can write a much longer description of your project. So we're going to write the different level of headings with your readme file. So we're going to write with a hash and write header one, header two. Well, these two would have come out as the same size. Double hashtags for header two. Three hashtags for Heather. <laughs> I cannot type today for Heather. Three, four, for Heather, four. And as you might see, depending on how many hashtags you put before the text that you type, that determines how small or how big the text comes out. That is fancy. And the next, we're going to write a bold text. This is called formatting, formatting a text. So if I put an asterisk and type within that asterisk, I get an italicized text, meaning a text in italics. So see, it's slanted like an italics. But if I were to put two, I would get a, a bold text. It might not be so visibly different because my GitHub is in dark mode, but if you look closely, you see that this text is much bolder than writing, say, a not so bold text. Okay, so there's a difference between the two of them. One is thicker. And I'm going to turn this into a website. This is, this is the exciting part that I've been waiting for. So to save my changes or to commit my change, it's the same thing on GitHub. We say you're committing a change or making a commit, right? I could say update readme but well, that's not very descriptive. If someone sees this commit or this change, they don't know what I did. But if I say, um, showed, showed the different, why, <laughs> heading types and made stuff, bold. So this is more descriptive than just saying update, right? And you can put a much longer um, description if you're filling up to it within this extended description box if you want to. And then I commit directly to the main branch saying commit changes. I'm going to quickly come back on Zoom and see that everyone has been able to edit their readme. Green check marks, thumbs up if you've been able to edit your readme.
Why did it fly up twice? Okay, two thumbs up. You're welcome. All right. Now, this is the very interesting part. <laughs> You're going to create your own website. But just for an extended explanation, you create a readme file. You add information about your project, and then you list all the tags clearly, add names and IDs of your collaborators. This would have been an exercise for now, but instead I'm going to give it to you as homework. So you do this at your own free time, but the next exercise would be to write whatever you want in your readme. And we're going to create a website from that readme. <clears throat> Excuse me. That introduces the concept of GitHub pages. So one of the many reasons why I like GitHub <clears throat> is that GitHub lets you host your websites for free in a very easy way. You can do this in 20 seconds. You can have your own website. It's simply amazing. So why GitHub pages? Like I said, it helps you host your website directly from your repository at no cost. It's perfect for your personal website, for your project website, for your documentation. I'm going to quickly show you something super cool that I did with GitHub. And it's actually my portfolio. If only I can find it today that I need to show it to you. So this is my entire portfolio. And GitHub has let me store everything from images to the styling. And I can simply access my portfolio at the click of a button and everything is right there. All on GitHub for free, right? So I'm going to show you how you can do something similar for yourself using only Markdown. So be prepared for an exercise. You already have a repo with a readme in it. I'm going to ask you to edit and add whatever details you want. And I'll show you how to create your website in three easy steps. First, you navigate back to your GitHub repo right here, friendly collab party. And you'll see some options up here. Issues, pull requests, actions, projects. Remember how we said GitHub lets you manage your project. This is where you would go for that. Wiki, security, insights, and this is the one we're looking for. So you head to settings. When you're in settings, you scroll down right here to pages. Remember, GitHub pages. So you go to settings and then pages. Deploy from a branch, right? Then you click on what branch you want to deploy from. Remember we said main is the default. And you deploy from the root and say save. This will take a few seconds, but afterwards we would have our readme as a website that you can share with anybody anywhere in the world. So if we refresh, well, now it's taking a little longer just to prove a point. I give it a few seconds. And once you refresh, you should have your website ready. Take your time. It's not like we have people waiting to be amazed. Right. <laughs> so GitHub finally did its thing. 
And you see that the site is now live. Your site is live at https npdebs.github.io forward slash the name of the repo. So whatever you call your repo, that's the name that will show up here. Your username.github.io forward slash the project name. So when we click on this, we see our very fancy website right here. And this is the part where everyone cheers in happiness because it looks so awesome. So this is an easy way to create a website. It looks ordinary, but you can take your website from just this to something even grander, right? For instance, let's see, precedes. This is also purely Markdown, but hosted with GitHub pages. And the amazing thing is that it doesn't have to be a one pager. It can go to other pages as well, right? If you want to do some custom fancy styling, it lets you do it as well. But for now, I'm going to pause and see if anyone needs some help creating their own websites. <laughs> I see excited reactions in the chat. That's cool. Yes, you can. So you can easily share the link to this website that we've created. I'm going to go back. So if you've created a website for your repo, an easy way to make it accessible from here would be to go to about right here, about settings. And you have a description. Once you say use your GitHub pages website, right? The URL pops up here and you save. Once you save, Amazing, the link is right there. So anyone who comes to this repo can easily see your, your website and click on it. I'm going to give you the link to this in the chat so you can be amazed. Up close. So that's a link to the website. And this is your readme. Irene, how are we doing on time? I still have around 20 minutes to go. Um, so we have a question in the chat. Um, Shibran is asking, can my colleagues comment or edit the GitHub content? Thank you for asking. Yes, your colleagues can comment or edit your GitHub content, but there's a catch. For your colleagues to edit something that you have on your own GitHub repository, they need to create a copy of that repo for themselves. And then in that copy of the repo, they make all the changes that they want to and ask you to click one button. That one button pulls all the changes that they've made in their copy into your main repo or the easier way would be to just give them something called right access. Type in that in the chats, right access. So giving someone right access means that you're giving them permission to edit your repo directly without needing to make a copy or a fork as we call it. Did that answer your question? Yeah, you're welcome. What is the name of the other tool that we can use? Okay, so Mohammed is asking, what is the name of the other tool that we can use to add pictures and styles? Now, there's actually more than one way to go about that. For mine, for my portfolio that looked really fancy, I used programming languages like HTML, which is an advanced version of form of Markdown. It's slightly more complicated than Markdown. And another 
styling language called CSS, Cascading Style Sheets. You could learn how to write HTML and CSS and you can have something as pretty as that. Or you could add customizations to your GitHub pages. I'm going to show you one of them actually. Just going to, I won't demonstrate how to add that here, but just so you know that it's possible. There's something called Jekyll. If you use Jekyll, this Jekyll, it's um, a static site generator. If you use Jekyll, you can get websites that are I mean, fairly easy to run, yet they have already existing styles, right? So if you use this, I'm going to copy this out for you in case it's something that you want to try out. And there are so many other ways to customize your GitHub, whether it's by learning the languages or by using templates that already exist. Can we add images to our Markdown readme? Yes, we can. So we can add images to our Markdown. I'm going to go back to this really quick and show you a couple of ways that you can add images. One of them would be to directly drag and drop an image from your computer or from anywhere else. So let's go to, I'm going to drag and drop an image from my laptop into my readme. So this is me dragging and dropping a really large image. It says uploading your files one over one. It's taking a while. So it's it's right there now. If we preview, we should be able to see the image that I added. Yay. All right. So this is how you do it with drag and drop. Alternatively, edit, you can go online. Um, this is a nice place where I like to get images on Splash. I feel like I'm giving you a lot of trade secrets today. You, these are free images mostly. You can copy image and paste. <laughs> it says that's a big file. So I need to use a file that's less than 10 MB. Let's see. I'm going to take out this image for now. So I have copied the link to the image. That's what I did. Maybe I did that too fast, but I copied the image address. And in Markdown, you have to write your images like this. You put square braces and then brackets for where you put the URL. So the link to the image goes here in between the brackets, right? So that's where I put my link. And here is where I would put something called an alt text or a description. But for now, we're just going to leave that so we don't overcomplicate things. So that was as easy as doing exclamation marks, square brackets, and normal brackets. So if you preview, we should be able to see that beautiful image that we copied right there in our readme. So if you have a screenshot of your project or your website, whatever it is, you can just add that screenshot right there in your readme. Do we have more questions? Oh yeah, sorry. I can zoom out the screen, sure. Thanks for letting me know, it's much better. So we've added images using drag and drop. So you just pull the image from your computer into the readme. 
or you get the link or the URL to the image, write the simple format here, exclamation, square brackets, and normal brackets. And then you put the link in the normal brackets. I think my computer lets me do something like this, where I drag the image directly. Oh no, it chooses not to work today. I'm very sorry. Oh well, so that is how you would add an image. And pop quiz, how would I save every addition I just made? Let's see. How would I save all the changes I just made? Oh, this is a good question. I like this question. If I want is people are so fast commit changes that's exactly how i would save the changes i'm going to save that and come back to the question so commit changes right and we put in a detailed detailed description but don't say detailed description detailed description is not a detailed description what did you do add an image of a C and save. So I had a pretty interesting question in the chat that says, if I want to become a GitHub pro, where can I learn more tips and tricks, please? So if you recall, page, things like two of our training material. I'm going to share the link to this slide one more time in the chat. Um, so this material you see was created using these resources. So if you can only go back to these resources, then just maybe you can be an expert as well. Also, I have a personal favorite that I like as well. Um, basic Git commands with examples. This is one very good. This is one that I like. Um, I'm going to put that in the chat. Um, and W3 schools as well. Let's see, W3 schools. W3 Schools is a good place to learn HTML and CSS. The languages I told you would be helpful in creating your own readme. So here you have all the languages, all the languages, but you can search Git. So this is a GitHub tutorial that you can take as well. Git, git. But the thing is, try not to take in too much at the same time. Otherwise, you end up feeling really overwhelmed. I'm going to put some YouTube videos as well that I used when I started learning GitHub. I think those will be useful for people who are not big fans of Reading lectures. I think this is a good place to pause and see if we have more questions from the previous parts of today's session or just general concerns or somewhere someone got lost that they might need help with. In the meantime, I'm going to stop my screen share. So what questions do we have?
What questions do we have? Don't be shy. All right, I think we've come to the end of today's session. Um, it's been mad fun doing this and seeing your excited reactions is making me appreciate just how amazing GitHub is all over again. So thank you all. And of course, if, if you do need help after today, I'm going to put my Slack handle you already know my GitHub handle because I showed you. But I'm Debs on Slack. You can find me or by email as Debs at we are ols.org. Text me anytime. I'm going to pass it over to you, Rene, now because I have been talking a lot. Thank you, Debs. Um... I, I see a lot of comments uh, about um, how a great talk you gave here. Uh, very nice explanation. Um, and yeah, people might have questions. So the place to get answers is, um, Debs, are you going to be in the co-working on Friday? Yes. Okay, then we will open uh, a coaching session with Debs in the table for a coaching session. And she will be there uh, to help you open your website, um, go through the steps that she went over today. Um, so please stay tuned for that. I will send an email as a reminder. Um, for now, I also want to remind participants and all of you to please register for graduation. Um, as you know, we have uh, two sessions on Tuesday and Thursday next week. And the uh, idea is for us to hear about your work and about how, um, what are your plans for using what you learned in the program for your future work. Um, it's five minutes, five minutes of presentation. Um, and it can be really casual. If you don't want to prepare any slides, you can just open your mic and then tell us a little bit about your work and about your plans for um, the future. Um, we, this part of graduation is really exciting for me, always at the end of the cohort, uh, just having this space for everyone to share with, um, with the cohort what you learned um, and what you want to do next. So, um, and yeah, this is a requirement for the certification, uh, but hopefully uh, you also take this as an opportunity uh, to share more about you and your work. Um, I guess, yeah, um, this is all for the session today. We are at the end of the training sessions um, and next week is our last. We are going to have only presentations. Um, yeah, the deadline, if you prefer to uh, send a pre-recorded presentation. We're going to extend the deadline. Um, we're going to give one week after the cohort for you to submit your video. Um, and yeah, if you need a little bit more time, um, again, all of this information, uh, I'm going to send a reminder by email. Um, but if you have questions, I am happy to answer them here or by email as well. Um, yeah, for now, uh, please help me give Devs a round of applause for this session. Um, yeah, thank you, Devs. Um, so I'm gonna stop the recording now and I'm gonna stay here for until the end of the, the session uh, if there are other questions or things that you wanna talk about. Thank you everyone for joining.
Thank you, folks.